Five muscle growth myths everyone falls for, literally everyone. Even trusted fitness experts still yap about these things and I'm here to break them down. These are things that again, are keeping you from sticking to the damn plan and the damn plan is you lifting consistently. I will, this is my mission. This is my life's mission now. I will be known as the guy that kept telling you to just be in the gym and lift consistently no matter what. Let's break it down though. Program hopping. Boy, oh boy, this grinds my gears so much. The idea that program hopping is either good or bad for your gains is not based on much, if anything. The idea that if you do a slightly different or if you vary your exercise selection or the exercise order or the exercise days is going to ruin your gains is BS. The typical argument you hear about this is that at first you get used to an exercise, therefore there are neural adaptations and because there are neural adaptations and you'll get stronger, it will be difficult to make actual progress because you have to get those adaptations out the way first for, for you then to be able to gain muscle, which is absolutely BS. If you were to go to the gym, on Monday week one and do an inclined chest press machine and then the next week do a Smith bench press. Do you really think that your muscles are going, okay, well, he went to failure, trained the function of the muscle. We are now not going to grow any muscle because this is a slightly different exercise. Obviously extreme scenarios where you do a completely different exercise every week that you have never done before and it's completely new to you. Sure, I hear that to an extent, but even even that is not going to kill your gains unless you're doing that literally for every exercise. You could freestyle your training as long as you're performing more or less the same movement patterns and you are not freaking it with the changes in exercise selection. You could play around with exercise order, you can slightly change exercises and you can be absolutely fine even if you do that pretty frequently. The reality though is that program hopping, you saying I'm going to do push pull legs, doing push pull legs for three weeks and then doing upper lower for another six weeks. If you're consistently in the gym training close to failure, you are are not missing out on gains because you program hopped. You are not missing out on gains because you weren't able to track your progress. Because at the end of the day, what matters is you consistently training close to failure, not whether you hit a PR on a specific exercise. If you're training close to failure consistently, you will be fine, even if the exercises are slightly different and vice versa. Program hopping or constantly changing things is not necessary for adaptation. People change it because it's the exercises start to feel uncomfortable or because they are bored with them or whatever. You could perform the same movement patterns, the same exercises for the rest of your life. As long as you're taking all the boxes that you need to take and you're targeting the functions of the muscle, you are fine. There's no evidence to show that you need to confuse the muscle or do anything of that sort. So in both cases, don't worry about it. If you want to vary your shit, vary your shit. And you know who can vary your shit if you want to and can do that a lot, literally every session? MyAdapt. MyAdapt, smart coach in your pocket. Can I, you can actually tell MyAdapt if you want to keep workouts consistent or if you want things to vary, even to an extreme extent. MyAdapt.com, give it a try. Don't take my word for it. Call Dr. Pack for a two week free trial or drpack.com to work with me. I won't be changing your shit every week though. Beware, just kidding. If you want that, try MyAdapt. Come on, bro, it's long now. I'm not gonna be changing your workouts every week. Just freestyle things, watch the video, don't pay me, win-win. Anyways, back to it. Please, enough with the program hopping platitudes. Nobody's out there missing out on gains because they're hopping from one program to the other. Most people that program hope are also the people that will stop working out after a few months because they're, you know, vibes sort of lifters. They lock in for three months, do program one, the ADHD program two, stop for four months, start again, stop eventually, stop forever. You can freestyle your training, cancel the program insanity. I understand that most of you, many of you out there like programs because they give you structure, totally fine, structure is fine, but you can literally just train hard, do your shit, not think about a program, and you'll be fine. Another annoying myth, arbitrary rep ranges. Just because you've decided to assign a rep range to an exercise, that doesn't mean anything. Even if you go above that rep range or below that rep range, as long as you're close to failure, you will make gains. Obviously, you don't want your performance to be dipping and regressing for, uh, for a while. That may be a sign that you're under recovering, but whatever. Staying in the five to 10 rep range on some exercise because 
ranges that will build thickness or whatever, it's BS. Rep ranges that are assigned by coaches or on programs are usually arbitrary. There's no magical rep range based on an exercise or a movement pattern. And this is a rough rule. This is not a rigid rule. As long as you're at five plus reps, you're solid from a hypertrophy standpoint. Really, even if it's a bicep curl. If you want to do curls for sets of five to six reps, super hypertrophic, amazing. If they feel good, do them. There's no data to support that on a specific exercise, you need to go higher or lower because it's a small muscle, therefore the fatigue or vice versa, thickness, meekness, whatever. If you're an optimizer, including a bunch of rep ranges, good idea. And overall, most of you will do a bunch of rep ranges, so this is not really an issue. But don't feel like you, are, you have to stick to a specific rep range if you don't like it. You can go for super high reps if that's your thing or super low reps. You can do a lat pull down for a set of five. You could do bench press for a set of 20 or 25 if you like that or if it feels better, as long as you're truly close to failure. The only caveat there, and this is on the back of an analysis we did a few years ago, people are pretty bad at estimating how close they are to failure after 12 reps. So ideally stick to five to 12 reps if you don't trust yourself. If you train to failure, then you can be super flexible with your rep ranges. Myth number three, and this is a big reality slap and a big hug to many coaches out there. Listen to me, lifter. I am looking at you directly right now. You always making progress is a myth, both from a strength and a mus muscle growth standpoint, unless you jump on PDs. When we look at the literature on strength specifically, for example, when we look at power lifters and long-term strength gains in power lifters, the population that focuses specifically on three exercises and their entire training revolves around those exercises, those people will see great gains in the first year of powerlifting, and that's when looking at thousands of lifters by looking at competition data, they will see top gains in the first year around 7.5 to 12% over baseline, and then over 10 years experience the same sort of gains. Over 10 years and at some point plateau. And you've seen that with many powerlifters that you follow, if you follow, there comes a point where there's no more gains, no matter what you try. You're chasing RPE PRs, or maybe that, you know, two and a half, five pound PR here and there, body weight, PR, whatever, that could just be because you had a good day versus a bad day. There comes a point where you're not, where progress is not going to come easy and may not come at all. And that's the reality with muscle growth as well. I'm pointing at multiple cameras here. I'm losing my mind. But that's the reality with muscle growth as well. First few years of training, as long as you're doing your due diligence and you're lifting hard, blah, 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 you will make the majority of your gains. There comes a point where you're looking at very marginal gains. You will see that. Look at natty bodybuilders. When they compare their stage pictures and they talk about the progress they've made. To myself, I can see what they're talking about. To most of you out there, you'll be like, this is the same person. If we flip the pictures, for most of you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. There comes a point where it's not your coach's fault, it's not your fault, it's, you're not missing out on anything. You've been lifting for a while, which is great, but you're not gonna make a ton of gains. It's a reality. Progress will not always be there, and that's fine. Find ways to make your training interesting, try new exercises so you can fake progress, but don't fool yourself. If you've been doing an exercise for a while and you're pretty strong on it, there may come a point where you're not gonna make more gains on that exercise. You're not, you might not hit many PRs. It's not because you're doing anything wrong, it's because that's the reality of things. Same goes with muscle growth. Your chest may not be able to grow anymore, or at least to a substantial degree after a point. And that is fine. Be in it for the love of the game, for the love of God. And this is supported all the time by the literature, both in high level power lifters and in gen pump individuals. And it's the same for strength and muscle growth. If you've done the basics for a while, there comes a point where things will slow down and an unfortunate point where things will stop. I am blessed as a lifter to be at the point where I don't care if I make more gains. I love training hard and I will do so. I don't care if I hit a PR on the deadlift, hitting 300 kgs, seven plates would be amazing, but I don't care. If I do, it's cool. I will change exercises just so I chase progress and have new goals to keep training interesting, but at the same time, I'm happy with not making more gains. Another stupid myth that comes on the back of this progress grindset, mindset, whatever culture is no pain, no gain. Yes, bro, you can make amazing gains with minimal pain. 
minimum effective dose, five, six sets per week if you wanna add a bit more just to be safe or whatever. A handful of sets per muscle group per week, hit those sets hard. Sure, there's some pain, but after you get used to it after a couple of weeks, it's literally the easiest thing in the world, especially if you love lifting. You can make amazing gains both in strength and hypertrophy with minimal pain. In strength, more so. In strength, we know that you don't need to train close to failure, you simply need to lift heavy. And you can do very low volumes and might, may even maximize strength gains. So the idea that unless your workouts are feeling absolutely grueling and you're there fighting with the iron diamond gym, unk, run up the hill, I don't know what that, that trend is about, but the idea that no pain, no gain is BS. And look, lifting and the gym is something that for me personally changed my life. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for lifting. It taught me much more than just lifting. So I get the, the angle there of no pain, no gain, and I get that lifting can teach you a ton of things and discipline, blah, blah, blah. But after a point when you enjoy lifting, the idea that it's this super hardcore, deep thing that you have to like really fight with yourself to do it every day is BS. We love lifting and I lift almost every day at this stage because I love it, not because I need to do it. And if you are somebody out there who just wants to be jacked, after a certain point, especially if you enjoy the act of lifting, you can do very little, experience very very little pain, make it extremely sustainable and pretty much have it on autopilot for the rest of your life and make amazing gains. So no pain, no gain, whatever. Yeah, okay, if you quantify pain as going to failure on five sets a week, then maybe you need to G-check yourself. Just kidding. Lastly and leastly, strength equals muscle growth. The idea that you hitting a PR on an exercise necessarily lead is what tells you that you've gained muscle is not 100% BS, but it's a bit BS. Yes. As long as you're training close to failure, keep in mind, people, and I, I hate it. I hate it when people do that. You are not living in a lab. You have external stressors, the sleep, family, work, this, that, the other. There are so many factors that can affect your performance and so much noise where you can't tell for sure why you hit a PR on a particular exercise. Obviously, the overall trend of your performance going up is a good trend and you want to be hitting PRs over time. That's a good, that, that can give you a good idea that good things are happening, but you hitting a PR from one week to the other or one month to the other could literally be because you had less stress or less whatever, because you rested a bit more or ate a bit more. The idea that, oh, okay, I increased my chest press by five kg of five pounds. Obviously it's not a bad thing. Assess your physique. Do you, are you bigger? Are you actually making gains? Uh, are you looking visibly bigger? Because if you're just going based off of strength, then you may be missing uh, on the big picture and you may actually be missing out on adjustments to your training that may allow you to make gains. So if you're doing one exercise for your chest and you're like, yep, I'm getting stronger on the bench press, therefore my chest is getting bigger, is it? Check. If it's not, it may be best that you try different exercises or do a bit more or whatever. It's important to G-check that because now with the craze of like super low volume training to the sometimes even less than minimum effective dose training and this focus on strength gains to infer hypertrophy adaptations, I think we've, we've lost uh, our minds here a bit. Sure, keep your strength as one one of the things that you look at over time, but obviously assess your physique. Don't just go based on that. If you are getting stronger, that's likely a good sign, but it shouldn't be the only thing you look at to infer whether you are growing. Check if you're actually fucking growing. You can make strength gains while not following any principles that align with solid training for hypertrophy. You could start doing singles or low rep heavier training on a particular exercise and experience rapid strength PRs. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're also growing. Thank you for listening listening to me, I've dispelled some myths and made training easier for you. MyAdult.com for the smartest coach in your pocket. Call Dr. Pack for a two week free trial. I sound like a salesman, rascal apparel, random plug. Call Dr. Pack 10% off and DrPack.com to work with me, aka have me yell those things at you in private. Thank you and I'll see you guys, my rascals. Shout out Omar Yusuf next time. Both.